In a time where a lot of horror content is dominated by ARGs or a full out animated horror series, Beckett Wagner hit me with a wave of nostalgia because this channel is really good at bringing back the old fashioned found footage horror that I used to watch here on YouTube seven, eight years ago. I'm not exaggerating, this series film wise is amazing and if this thing came out in like 2015, it would have millions of views. Because I don't understand how some of this stuff is shot from seemingly always empty modern schools to what literally seems like he's crawling through plumbing systems putting his life on the line, the atmosphere built here is applaudingly good. And by using only a camcorder, it's more akin to an old vlog of people exploring abandoned buildings or entering scary places late at night in the hopes of finding something in the unknown, which is stuff you just don't see on the platform anymore. And to go along with this amazingly shot horror series, there is a deeply embedded mystery about a boarding school basement that eats kids. I'm not exaggerating. It's a very hidden story, but there is definitely one here, and I think putting all the pieces together reveals an insane plot. Now, before I go on, this is just my head canon and what I think is happening in the story. This is not meant to be the end all be all. Go watch it for yourself. It's an amazing series. And if you come to a different conclusion, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear it. Also, sorry if there's an echo in my mic. I'm literally in my school library recording this in a room. But let's start with the first episode titled Found in the Long Unused Basement of a Massachusetts High School. In the intro video to the series, we open up to a kid. His name is not given to us, I'm gonna tell you right now, and it won't be for the rest of the series as we are gonna go through different protagonists and you'll find out the reason why for that. So I'm gonna refer to all the kids by their thumbnail title number. So Kid Zero is walking us through how he found an unused area of the school through an old elevator taking him underneath the building, which is basically just a four door storage closet. This is like a candid event for all the protagonists to come through this area. And it's worth pointing out that unlike the other times we're gonna see this area pop up, the lights are actually on as if the area is still being used. Pairing that with this video being labeled as zero, we can presume that this is ground zero or the first incident that kicks off the many more to come. But as he looks around, he notices that there's only one unlocked door, leading to a long, dark corridor section of the basement. Exploring it in its entirety, Kid Zero begins to get this eerie feeling that something is off, as he hears what I can only describe as echoed screeching against the pipes. Over the next 10 minutes, we see him slowly lose himself in anxiousness, as when he attempts to leave, the elevator won't take him back up, leaving him stranded and alone. He gets restless being in that tiny four-door room and after some time, re-enters the pitch black corridor just to get some more walking space. But as he attempts to go back to the elevator, he is locked inside that section, and with limited light on his flashlight, he soon enters total darkness. He says that something walks by as he sees a shadow going underneath the door, but I looked back and I never saw anything except maybe a small line of a shadow, so I'm unsure what he really saw. But as he sits there in the pitch black darkness, sounds of pipes dropping on the floor echo out as he begins to panic at something we can't see before his camera battery dies. After watching that video, it hooked me into the series. I understand if some people may not like it because it's much more of a slow burn, it's a very long video, but without any jump scares, the atmosphere it builds up is disturbing to say the least. It reminds me of those phase rug tunnel videos when he would go out and record himself running through this super long dark tunnel trying to see what was at the end of it. In the following episode, we learn enough time has passed that rumors of a sealed off basement the school has begins to float around, as well as a new upgrade to the camera equipment, so it makes it a lot easier to see what's actually happening. But surprisingly, nothing about a missing kid, but the previous events that happened clearly had an impact. Kid 1 finds a different elevator, but it seems the school has tried to stop anyone from entering it, but using just a screwdriver and the elevator switch on top of it, Kid 1 is able to pry it open and get it working. And before I go on, how did he get permission to do this? Or if this place is abandoned, which it can't be because, then how is he supplying power everywhere? It makes no sense, and this looks dangerous. But all that just adds to the allure of this series for me. He gets it to work and we see this elevator has horrible red carpeting, it's very ugly to look at. But he goes to the basement and enters from one of the previously locked doors. As we are now back in the same section where Kid Zero was. Showing the school is also trying to prevent them from going down there, the other elevator is also turned off. And the door to the pitch black corridor section is blocked off with caution tape. And may I just add that the people working here aren't doing a great job at hiding this underground death trap. 
And being a dumbass high school kid, he enters the clearly restricted area and explores around. This time though, through that long hallway, there's a couple more doors and turns that are open and he's able to find a basement shutdown notice draft dated 1110. Whether that's November 10th or November 2010 isn't clear, but when it comes to closure dates in schools or big buildings, it's usually dated month and year as to make the time frame more broader. And I'm completely making that up. I don't know. I just think that would make more sense. But we see an old computer as well, a Dell dual core processor, good enough to run Pop Tropica, but not much else. So we're understanding more and more that this basement isn't super old, still being used well into the 2000s. And with a camcorder and other items seen throughout the series, we could say these events at least happened somewhere between the mid 2000s to around the early 2010s. Kind of broad, but the best window I can give. And as he explores around, Kid One begins to hear that same screeching, almost as if someone's rubbing on pipes with a knife. Getting more creeped out, he attempts to leave, but succumbs to the same fate as Kid Zero. But this time, we actually see him get taken out. His feet are pulled out from beneath him, and I feel like that will be more important later on. We also see that he's bleeding. I'm unsure if it's from the fall or being hit with something, possibly. But in this next video, I think we actually get some idea of what is going on with the kids once they basically kick the bucket. In the third video titled, A Student Explores His High School Basement, we follow Kid 2 as he opens the original elevator scene in the series opener. Exploring around, he notes that the caution tape from the blocked off door has been removed, which we saw the previous kid do. And would you look at that? It's his shoe as well. That's totally not creepy at all. And he again gets stuck. You might be noticing a pattern that goes on with all these videos, but at least this time he tries to pull a fire alarm to let somebody know that he's down there, but unlucky for him, it doesn't even work at all. And when the noises start to kick in, he doesn't wait to be taken out. He actually is able to break out of the corridor for the first time we've seen in the series and makes it all the way to the elevator. But that isn't enough as the creature now has either always been able to go past the corridor or whatever it is can now reach out further. And why I think that is, is due to what we see after. As we see him bleeding on the ground, but we also hear what sounds like him getting seemingly devoured as small noises of breaking bones play in the background. Almost as if a wild animal is doing this to him, but what's really interesting is how his body doesn't move. So it kind of makes me wonder if he's been ripped apart or what could possibly be happening. But I think that whatever is doing this is getting stronger with each new victim. And at this point, I know you guys might be feeling a little repetitive with the story format, and it does begin to feel a little tedious, and I think that is something the series does need to work on. I feel like we are investing a lot of time. I wish there would just be a little bit more that would be going on. But nevertheless, we go on. In the next video off the beaten path, we actually for the first time see whatever it is that's possibly trapping the kids. Following Kid 3 as he finds the red carpet elevator that was left open from Kid 1, he enters down again getting trapped, but luckily he has a cell phone. that gets no service, maybe because he's all the way underground or maybe because he has Verizon. And the main lore aspect we get from this video is when he frantically tries to escape, being so scared he just wants to run through the door. But before he can, we can see what I can only describe as small strings or vines coming out from underneath the door. And it's really, really weird because it makes me wonder if these strings are causing all of this or if it's just one part to a bigger overall monster. And before we get into this next video, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is my personal favorite of the series. If you decide to go to the series and watch only one of the videos, make it be this one. Student Disappearances right here, I think is the best. I highly recommend this one because what they're able to do and how they even got permission to even shoot this entire section just flies over my head. And we possibly get some of the biggest lore in the series out of this one. In this video, we follow Kid, I don't know, what are we on, four or five? It's, it's one of them. We follow a new protagonist as he finds the original elevator seen in the first video. And he just outright lets us know that due to major plumbing and electrical problems, the basement was locked up and the school decided to renovate over top of it to save costs. It's kind of an established fact that the art center, which I'm in right now, was not the best constructed building and they kept having problems in the basement with plumbing and electricity. And apparently all the issues got too expensive to fix. So instead of repairing everything, the school decided to renovate the entire like upper floors and sort of sealed this place off on like all the stairs and elevators were shut down. And we see the evidence for this in that same video as we see the work that the school attempted to do to fix the electricity and the notice of shutdown for the basement due to unsafe drinking water. Something else to know is we also see the earlier pulled fire alarm and another shoe on the ground. And it seems that it's building up to that same ending. We all know he's gonna get hit over the head, die, and devoured. But this time, this kid is actually smart and knows how to use a lockpick and is able to open up a previously locked door entering what seems like plumbing tunnels on top of the basement. And the dedication to this series is really shown as he is literally crawling belly first through dirt and debris. 
He also passes some red do not enter tape wrapped around a pipe blocking off a section of what seems to be the school's main sewage system, giving us more evidence of the contaminated water the school tried to fix and it possibly being a layer for whatever it is that's attacking these kids. And it was at this point I started to wonder possibly if every new kid we follow might just be the same one dying over and over again, like if they're in some kind of loop. Because I noticed that in this video, this kid has the same shoes as the previous one. At least they look very similar. Or maybe the creator just got lazy and tired of changing shoes every time. And we're just supposed to believe that all these kids are luckily recording everything that's happening and no one seems to notice, I don't know what, four kids now disappearing out of thin air? But I just don't have enough evidence in my mind to really confirm that for sure. But going back to it, as he crawls through the sewage pipes, he is again attacked and can be heard being eaten off screen. And even if I don't know if this is maybe some kind of time loop, the pieces of a puzzle are starting to form in my head with the red strings, the contaminated water, and the electrical problems, but we still have one more episode to look at before I get my conspiracy on what's actually going on. The latest video titled Growth and Movement switches it up on us. Kid 5 enters the basement through a literal screwed up hole in the wall, which leads to a stairwell to get down. And I'm not gonna lie, this video has the only jump scare in the series, if you can even call it that, and it absolutely scared the shit out of me. Even though it's really embarrassing once you see it, you'll understand. But the main takeaway from this video is when looking down towards the opposite exit of the corridors, Kid 5 sees what is seemingly those red strings from earlier now have turned into long lengthy vines, almost veins stretching across the entire wall to the ground. He's seen enough and plows through the door to get back to the elevator and is actually able to get it to work, taking him back up. But sadly, it seems the creature has either gotten stronger or this place is starting to have some faulty wiring as the elevator midway up just stops. And in a panic, he tries to get on top of the elevator to see if he can escape, but he accidentally steps on the elevator switch. And at that same time, his leg gets caught, crushing and killing him as we only hear his blood dripping seconds later. And so far, that's it. I really enjoyed the series. I thought it was something fresh and new. And even though Beckett doesn't post all that often, I think when he does, for me, it's a banger. The tension built up throughout the videos is really good. And even though we know kind of what's gonna happen to each kid once they enter the basement, it's at least interesting to see when something different happens and really hooks me in, especially that fifth video. That one was great. But it's finally time for what I think is happening in the series. And there's just enough evidence to throw an idea of what might be going on, but don't don't take this as the end all be all. This is just for fun, like I said again, and I highly recommend going to watch the videos yourself and coming up with what you think. But here we go. Looking at the notice pertaining to the quality of water and the electrical problems, it was clear that the basement was not in good condition to teach out of. Pretty quickly, getting the notice to fix the problems or shut down. The school began renovations to try and fix whatever was causing this, but soon realized that either it was too expensive, like we here mentioned previously, or something else was actually causing these damages something that crawled through the pipes and around the electrical wire, causing problems with doors locking automatically and the water being tainted to unsafe degrees. They attempted to get rid of it, but soon found these small vines running through the entire basement system, almost like veins, going along pipes and making screeching sounds whenever it moved. Seeing this infestation as a lost cause, they decided to just shut down renovations and build on top of it, deciding to use it as storage space, not thinking much of what they believe is just a plant. That is until one nosy kid decides to investigate the bottom floor for himself. After this, the school decides that if this gets out, everything will be shut down. So they board up every entrance, elevator, stairwell to get down there to make sure no kid ever ventures back. And over time, rumors of an old closed down basement that was sealed due to construction problems begin to spread. And as more time passes, more people become more curious when they find these entrances all of them opening a way down, but never being able to return themselves. As every time they enter, the vines, or maybe the basement itself, traps them, devouring them and growing more and more, being able to reach its grasp further with each new victim. Which gives reason as to why we never see a fully fledged monster outright and only the ever growing vines. And in my own head, part of me believes that the basement itself could be alive. And these might not be vines, but instead veins. The only way it's able to move is through these tunnel systems, using its abilities to stretch out and spread for new victims. And if that is true and the school knew what was going on, maybe that's why they sealed the basement off, because they knew it was a monster in itself. And since these ways were shut down and it was never able to reach anyone, it lay dormant. But now in the series, we know that those entrances were never shut, leaving the door open for a never ending feast. Now, does this theory solve every part of the series? No, there's still so much more to be answered, such as why don't more people notice kids are disappearing? Is the school covering up what's truly going on? And the biggest question that I've seen over and over again, is there some kind of time loop going on and we're following the same kid going through the same events? This series still has so much left unanswered and hopefully we get something a little more revealing than kid goes to the basement and dies because it has so much potential and I see the commitment in these videos because I'm not calling belly first in a plumbing system for any of y'all, I'ma let that be known now. 
that's true dedication, I want to see you have the opportunity to do more, and I hope you guys do as well. But maybe I looked too deep on this one, or I didn't look deep enough compared to this other video on the horrors of a girl and her dog monster best friend. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.